Tamam. Evet, herkese merhabalar. Öncelikle hoş geldiniz. Ee, biraz daha bekliyorum genelde 1-2 dakika bağlantı problemiyle karşılaşanlar oluyor diye. Ee, bir dakika içerisinde etkinliği yavaş yavaş başlatacağız. Sanırım e, herkes hazır. E, kullanıcı sayı, katılımcı sayısı da oldukça artmış gözüküyor. E, tekrar herkese merhabalar. E, i̇smim Mustafa Aşıroğlu. Microsoft Türkiye'de e, Power BI'nin de dahil olduğu Power Platform grubundan sorumluyum. Önceki webinarlardan zaten e, tanıyanlarınız vardır. E, yine yayınımızda şu an arka tarafta Halil Güngörmüş e, hocam var. Kendisi de e, Power, e, Power Platform Türkiye komitesinin zaten kurucularından. E, ve bugün aslında... E, Misafir konuşmacımız da Peter. Kendisi Avustralya'da bulunuyor aslında orada yaşıyor ve Microsoft'ta da bir MVP olarak Microsoft'un Power Platform alanındaki bir MVP'si olarak aynı zamanda bulunuyor. Ve kendisi bugün bize misafir katılımcı olarak Power BI'da çarşaf rapor oluşturmanıza, Pixel Perfect raporları oluşturmanıza izin veren Pedinet rapor altyapısını anlatacak. Aslında kendisi bu konuda Microsoft'la birlikte ofisli olarak çok daha detaylı eğitimler de oluşturdu. Bugün yapacağımız etkinlik yaklaşık bir buçuk saat sürecek ve yaklaşık saat işte beş buçuk gibi mümkünse biraz öncesinde etkinliği tamamlamayı hedefliyoruz. Power BI'da çarşaf raporlar nasıl yapılıyor adım adım kendisinden dinleyeceğiz. Halil senin eklemek istediğin bir şey var mı bu noktada? Herkese selam. Herkese selam, herkese hoş geldi. Ee, şimdi Power BI'dan maksimum faydayı elde etmeye çalışıyoruz. Ee, Paginated Reports'ta ya da sayfalandırılmış demeyi tercih ediyorum ben. Bunlardan bir tanesi. Ee, konuyla ilgili e, Peter'ın e, Microsoft web sitesinde e, ücretsiz olarak yayınladığı gayet güzel bir eğitim seti de var. Onun da linkini paylaşacağız. Bugün iyi bir introduction, bir giriş e, yapmayı istiyoruz. Evet. Mustafa Hocam sana bırakayım sözü. Sonra da zaten Peter anlatmaya başlayacaktır. Tamamdır. Ee, peki ben de teşekkür ederim. Ee, sözü çok biz uzatmayalım. Ee, thank you for joining us. And uh, I am handovering to Peter. And uh, in the front of all of uh, attendees. I again thank you uh, for uh, this event Peter. Uh, thank you for time. And joining us in our community event. Thank you. you are welcome. Thank you. 
Okay, just give me a moment while I'll share my desktop and um, I will just move things into place. Okay, could someone confirm that they can see a title slide? Yes, we can see clear, clearly. All right, excellent. Well, let's make a start then. So uh, I think the introduction has happened and uh, I recall that I was in Istanbul Gee, when was that? Was that January? And I had a very enjoyable week staying uh, in Istanbul and uh, just very nice, actually. The food was fantastic. Um, yeah, so very happy see you again. <laughs> Thank you. Well, look, very happy to, you know, under very different circumstances, but to deliver a remote presentation all the way from Melbourne, Australia. So for those that uh, haven't uh, met me before, I am an independent uh, BI expert and I've worked with Microsoft data products for now over, I think, 20 years. I started with Access uh, 95, and then I built to SQL Server 7 and SQL Server 2000, and then I just could not stop. And so I have evolved alongside the SQL Server story for BI, and of course, Excel BI, and in more recent years, Power BI. Uh, what's interesting about this session of paginated reports, it does take me right back to 17 years ago when SQL Server reporting services was first made available. And I was uh, delivering some training um, in 2003 for the very first time to uh, customers. So here I am back again. That's a little bit of background about myself. Um, I'm also a most valued professional with Microsoft for now over 13 years. Now, if you've been to one of my presentations before, um, you'll know that I like to do things a little bit differently when it comes to introductions and uh, this makes a lot of sense in fact that uh, what I'll invite you to do is to participate in this online survey. There are some simple questions to answer that tell me who you are and what your background in Power BI is and it also asks me to um, or asks you to tell me what are your main interests. So if you could please now just take a, a minute to uh, use the QR code on your phone or type in the URL in a web browser and then enter your answers, submit, and then real time, we'll see them return here to a dashboard. I love this part. You know, it's a really fun topic. Uh, and uh, you might need to invite me back another time because uh, I do have a session on real time Power BI. And it's a very interesting topic because there's also a new story emerging with uh, yes, automatic uh, page are, refresh, yeah. Yes, you are definitely right. Why don't we arrange another one next month? Next month, that, that's Yeah, soon. why not? <laughs> you know, at this rate, I'm just going to have to move to Istanbul if you need me to present so frequently. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, tell us but, your available time, then we can uh, set up another meeting. Yes, we, we can do that. And and if we're lucky, we I might even invite... Um, the, the program manager from uh, Microsoft that looks after it. Oh, we just we just recently uh, prepared a presentation for the upcoming uh, business application summit on real time Power BI. So, so yes, we'll definitely talk about uh, redelivering to the Istanbul group. Now, it's not Istanbul; it's Turkey wide. Am I am I right, or is it Istanbul focused? Uh, actually, most of the users are Istanbul, uh, at least it looks so, uh, but I believe that there are many people uh, spread it in Turkey. The, the, the number of groups are about 4K. Okay, well, welcome everybody countrywide in Turkey. Okay, so some results coming in. Now, you know, the question about your gender and age, it's interesting from a point of view that uh, it gives me an idea of, uh, you know, uh, who is using Power BI. But more interesting for me now is to know, you know, um, what role you're coming from. So I can see that we have three BI developers. We have a couple of business analysts, some data scientists. Uh, usually when we talk about paginated reports, we're talking about people that have formalized report authoring skills. As you will see, it's a very powerful product. It allows you to have good control over how you represent and display your data, but it requires some different skills to Power BI desktop report authoring. So we really are targeting BI developers, but we also welcome business analysts and others too. Now, the other result that I'm looking at is the Power BI experience, and I can see a range from zero through to eight. 
and uh, that's all relevant is that you know that you want to work with data visualization and uh, and that's great for the person that has a zero background i'm just going to describe that power bi is a cloud uh, analytic service from Microsoft allowing you to visualize and distribute your data in meaningful ways like reports and dashboards. And we're going to focus on the topic of reports and more specifically on the topic of paginated reports. All right, well, thanks everybody for um, submitting your survey results. I usually go to the next step and I ask the audience, you know, what do they think the average Power BI experience is? Well, I can't really ask you because uh, it's a one way discussion tonight on this uh, presentation, but what I could do is come down to the dashboard and I could ask a question of the data. And you see at the top right corner here that there's what we call the Q&A. And so I would just type in a natural language question and uh, sorry, Turkish is not supported, but English yes. is and Spanish is in preview. All right, and you can see the auto um, suggestion here says, oh, you might want to know what the average Power BI experience is. And I can learn that the exact answer is 5.06. It's an interesting question that I might ask again, so I will pin it to my dashboard. And then when I return to the dashboard, you'll now see that I have a new tile and I can monitor what the average is. So an average of five is pretty good. Now, the other thing about this dashboard is that when I click on a tile, I'm actually drilling across to the report so I can see more detail here and um, I'm going to explore the page here that says, well, what is the important topic for everybody? Uh, now, this is interesting because as I'm about to describe is that Power BI now supports two different report types. They're Power BI reports or they're paginated reports. And the topic of course tonight is paginated reports. So the six people here, you are certainly in the right presentation. And for the other 11, well, I'm going to compare the two types, but the focus is on what can you do with paginated reports and how can you design them? Now, it might be interesting also to take a look at the decomposition tree here. You know, if I understand that we have an average well, I thought we had an average of 5.6. Let me just refresh this data. So apparently the average is now 4.94. And uh, I can see here that there's a split between male, female. Female has a higher average. And we can see that the female business analysts uh, have got the highest rating for um, their experience. Whereas for the males, it's the data scientists up here um, giving us a higher at eight. And um, where are our BI developers? Here they are here. And you know, we could continue to drill down. What is the age group of our male BI developers and understand what their experience is in Power BI? If you haven't explored it, the decomposition tree is an awesome visual, but it's outside the scope of what I want to talk about tonight, which is paginated reports. Thanks everybody for participating in the survey. The outline then for this webinar is to introduce you to paginated reports describe the design experience for them. What is the consumption experience will be answered as well. And then I'm going to finish off by comparing and, and giving a good case for why sometimes paginated reports is a good choice. All right, well, let's do it. Let's start with what a paginated report. So by definition, these are reports that are optimized for printing or PDF generation, and they provide you as a report author, very good control to help you produce highly formatted pixel perfect layouts. If you already have experience with SQL Server reporting services, then I could describe that paginated reports are just the next step in the evolution of SQL Server reporting services. So they are in fact the same technology. RDL reports are paginated reports in Power BI. And so they're going to be useful when you need to produce reports like lists of things, like operational reports, like an invoice for your customer. They're developed in a different tool. We have Power BI Desktop is for Power BI reports, but we have a different tool named Power BI Report Builder that designs the paginated reports. And lastly, we often refer to these reports as pixel perfect reports. 
Now, compared to Power BI reports that many of you will be familiar with, these are optimized for analytic reporting. It's all about exploration and interactivity. And so we can do things like slicing and filtering and sorting and highlighting and cross filtering. And I think at last count, I think there were 15 or 16 different interactive capabilities that these reports support. So they're ideal when your users need to explore and discover deeper <coughs> meaning from data. They can be developed in the Power BI service using your web browser, but preferably they're developed using Power BI desktop and then you publish these reports to the service. Now we can refer to these reports as interactive analytic reports. All right, now what's interesting is to understand why they are different to help you understand when you would use them. So let me switch to my app here. Now this is a Power BI app and I want you to notice on the left hand side that I have the resources here and currently I'm on the sales analysis page of the sales analysis report. This is a Power BI report and I have the ability to switch my slicer from a different year. I've got some very nice looking visuals here and a KPI comparing to goal and some cards and I've got a combo chart here and I can hover over and I can see tool tips and I can even click to cross filter and then say, well, for December 2018, what were the number of orders and what were the number of distinct resellers? This is a good example of an analytic report. All right, so page two of this report is interesting because we can see from the title on this page in a moment that this page of the report is designed to be a sales order. And there's a filter on a single sales order, number 51721. Now remember that number because I'll be using it in demonstration later. Now what we see is that there's a table visual showing us each line of the order by product and by quantity and sales. And yet notice that there's a scroll bar and then vertically I can scroll down to show you that we've got 72 lines in this order. Okay, so far so good, but what's going to happen when I export this to PDF? And this process I know could take anywhere from five seconds to 30 seconds, so we will be patient, but um, perhaps if there are any questions that have come through, and by the way, you're welcome to ask questions and send them through on the chat, and um, I'll be happy to answer them um, either at the end or during my presentation. No questions yet. No questions yet. OK, <laughs> well, we'll just be a little bit patient and I'll continue talking. I'm not exactly sure why it takes so long to export uh, this to PDF, but sometimes it does. All right, PDF is generated. Let's open this up and let's see, open when done. And uh, here it is as a PDF document. Notice that it's a two page document for both pages in my analytic report. And yet when I scroll to the second page, I want you to notice that I have a scroll bar here, but it's just an image of the scroll bar. I can't move it. So this is not a good report design because it's impossible when exported to a print format to see all rows of data. And this is the thing. A Power BI analytic report has fixed page size, and if you have visuals, those visuals cannot expand to grow to display all data. The dimensions of those visuals is fixed. So it's not a suitable report type when printing an order for your customer. So let's explore the second report in my application. This report is in fact a paginated report. And the first thing I want you to notice is that when the report loads, the report has a parameter. And you'll see the parameter here. We're filtering by the sales order 51721. And I can scroll down and I'm seeing all of the data. OK, and you'll notice that I've got page one down the bottom, but if I keep scrolling, 
there are more pages. In fact, there are two pages of data. Now let's see when I export this. And the first thing I want you to notice is that there are many options for exporting a paginated report. Let me choose PDF. All right, now that this one is downloaded, let me go ahead and open. And uh, notice immediately, we can see that there are three pages for this report. And as I scroll down, we see page one in the footer of page two, and we see page three. So I, I want you to ask yourself the question, when you're sending your customer an invoice, do you want to invoice them only for the first 12 lines or for all lines? If your answer is that you'd like to invoice them for all lines for your services and products, then paginated reports is the tool for you. All right, there is my comparison of the two. They are both good reports, but for very different reasons. Analytic report versus pixel perfect printed report. Um, I want to just make a note about licensing before I get into any more detail. All right, so first of all, reports are developed on your desktop using Power BI Report Builder, and this tool is completely free. You can download it today and you can work with it to create reports. But to have Power BI render them and to have them distributed and shared in a secure way, you must publish to Power BI service, and specifically, you must publish to a dedicated capacity, and more, that dedicated capacity must have the paginated reports workload enabled. Now, what this means is for dedicated capacity that you need a premium subscription, either P1, P2, or P3, or you can use Azure A4, A5, A6. All right, now one other consideration is that uh, when you're publishing a paginated report to a workspace, unless it's your personal workspace, you will need a Power BI Pro license to publish. And that's the same for Power BI reports as well. Okay, so that completes the discussion on licensing. At this stage, paginated reports require dedicated capacity. Okay, well, where I'd like to take the presentation is to walk through the end-to-end -end design of a report and why not have me create the same sales order report. So let me demo how this could be created. So the first thing that I do is open up Power BI Report Builder. Now, opening it, you'll get the getting started window. And uh, when it's time to create a new report, you have these three wizard options and they can fast track your report design. Or what I'm going to do is use the blank report. And now you see the blank report ready for design. So the first thing I'm going to do is on the file ribbon tab, I'm going to save this to my PC and uh, to my computer and my D drive, and I'm going to call it sales order. All right, let me introduce you to Report Builder. So you'll find across the top, it has its own ribbon, and many, many useful commands are available directly from the ribbon. Next, on the left-hand side, we have what's known as report data. And this is where you can manage the resources for your report, the parameters, data sources, and data sets that retrieve your data. And then next we have the parameters pane. And this is where you can customize the layout of the parameters that are used to prompt your users for values, like the sales order number. Next we have on the right-hand side is the properties pane. And for the selected object, it exposes all properties and allows you to edit them. And I just want you to notice for the report itself, you know, maybe there are 20, 25 properties. So it is very, very, um, can be very complex, but also gives you a lot of control on exactly how you can define. Uh, lastly, along the bottom, you've got what we call the grouping pane. And for the data regions that we can add to a report layout, um, this is where we can control the groupings. More on that in demonstration shortly. So let's now focus on the report design itself. Before I commence design, I'm going to right click outside the design and I'm going to open up report properties because this is what matters if you're going to print a report. First of all, what page units are you using? And this will default 
to your regional settings? And then do you intend to print in portrait or landscape? I'll leave it as portrait. And then what are the um, sizes of the page? For me here in Australia, I would choose A4. And then you can see the width and height are automatically set. Now for margins, I think these margins are very generous. So I prefer more room on the paper for my data. So I'm going to reduce them all to one centimeter each. Now this is important. The width is 21 centimeters. So if I subtract the left and right margins, that means I have exactly 19 centimeters for the width of the body. And you must be careful, if you exceed this, then your report will produce probably many blank pages. All right, so let's remember that 19 centimeters for the width. I click OK, then I click here, and I'm gonna make it clear to you that what I've just selected is the body of the report. And therefore, I'm going to change the width to 19 centimeters. Beautiful. So what you've just learned there is so that this is the body of the report. And what I'm highlighting beneath is the footer that will repeat on each page. Now what that means is that I have two text boxes for the title and for the footer. And I want you to notice that the text box in the body means that the title would repeat on the first, or it will not repeat. It will be on the first page only, and it will never repeat. If I want it to be on every page, which I do, I come to the insert ribbon and I turn on the header, and then I go ahead and I drag the text box to the top of the header, and now it will repeat for each page. I'm gonna move my text box in the footer to the very far right, and I'm also gonna resize it so it's nice and wide. Now, when I right click in a blank area of the header, I can go ahead and insert an image. And it would be nice to put the company logo inside the report. And then I'll position it in the top right and then resize it down. There we go. All right. So the basics of the report are done. Let me save. And what you'll often do in Report Builder is that you will, on the Home tab, switch to the preview. You'll run the report to understand what it looks like. And at this stage, very simple. It's a single page report with a title, a logo, and the footer with the date and time. So I switch back to design, and clearly, the next thing that I need to do is retrieve some data for the sales order. So in my report data pane, I simply right click and look at the two options I have here. The first one you do not have if you're using SQL Server reporting services. This is unique to paginated reports in Power BI, and it's the ability to connect to a Power BI data set and then produce your report from a data set that you've developed in Power BI Desktop. Today, I'm going to be connecting to an Azure SQL database, so I will choose the data source option and then notice what you have available as supported data sources. Azure Analysis Services, Azure SQL Data Warehouse. Today we call that Azure Synapse. We have Azure SQL Database. For on-premises data sources, we have SQL Server, SQL Server Analysis Services, and Oracle and Teradata. But there's one more that you might notice if you're familiar with reporting services that is new, and that's the Enter Data. And it's the ability to actually hard code a table of data inside the report itself. It's very similar to what Power BI Desktop does with its enter data capability. Its usefulness is limited, I accept this, but it can be helpful if you need to produce a quick demonstration or a proof of concept to your boss or to your customer to say, this is what your data could look like in a paginated report. So for now, I'm going to choose the Microsoft Azure SQL database and I click build. And this allows me to build up a connection to the Azure SQL database. I'm going to enter a username and password, save that password and then enter my database. I click 
test connection to make sure the connection succeeds. Fingers crossed. Looking good, and then I click OK. And then what I typically do is I name the data source, the name of the database. All right, when I click OK, you'll see why in my report data pane. This object in my report represents the connection to the Azure SQL database. So the next thing that I do is retrieve data by creating a data set. Now, a report design can have multiple data sources and multiple data sets. And therefore, I, as a good practice, I name my first data set DS main. DS is for data set, and main is the main data set or the principal data set that this report will use. It will be the list of sales order lines. Now, when it comes to creating a query, you have a choice for a relational database. It could be text. So you could copy paste a, a select statement from your favorite tool, like SQL Server Management Studio, or you could in fact use a store procedure, providing that it returns a single select statement. Okay, and then when I choose this option, a drop down list lets me select the uh, store procedure by its name. Okay, well, I'm going to use text, but here's another consideration. If you are not familiar with writing select statements, then you can use the assistance of the query designer. And this lets me very easily produce my query. Here are the tables in my data source. So I know that from factory seller sales, hmm, what do I need? I can see there's a reseller key and I can see there's an order line number here. Let me add the order line number. And in the related dim reseller table, I will bring in the reseller name. In the related dim product table, I will bring in the English product name. And then I'll introduce the quantity, unit price, and sales amount. So all of those columns have become selected fields for my query. Now this design is very clever. When I expand the relationships, you will see that it automatically creates joins between tables and you have the ability to modify the join type. And lastly, we have the ability to apply a filter. Let me filter the order number and I'll remind you the order number that I used was this 51721. So let me use sales order 51721. And now I can test the query by running it. Okay, and I would expect that there are 72 sales order lines being retrieved in preview, and there they are. So I'm satisfied that this is the data that I need for my report. Now, there's a very interesting capability right here. Do I wanna parameterize the filter, in which case the user running the report can choose the value? And of course I do. So I'm gonna check this checkbox. And when I edit this as text, I want you to see the query that has been constructed automatically through the graphical designer. And I want you to notice that the parameter here, the at sales order number is what we call a query parameter, that a value will be substituted in at execution time. So now when I click OK, that query is copied into my data set Maybe. And the next stage is I come to my fields. So I have an opportunity here to rename my fields to make them more friendly. So I'm going to call it line reseller product quantity price and sales. And now when I click OK, I want you to watch over here to see what happens. 
because two things have just happened. My data set consisting of fields has been added to the report. And look at this. In my parameters, I now have a parameter named sales order number. And in the parameters pane, you can see it here. So let's take a quick look at this parameter. It has a unique name. It has a prompt value. So I'm going to make that more concise and friendly. It has a data type. We can configure available values that would present a drop down list to your user. I won't do that now. And you could define default values. And I want you to notice that a default value has been set based on the value that I created when I defined the query. Now, I usually would not leave this there, but when I'm developing the report, it's very helpful to have a default because it saves me every time I preview the report from having to enter a value. So for the moment, I will leave that value there. Now, when I run the report, you will see that that default sales order is being used to retrieve the data. All right, so the next stage in my development is that when I have a parameter, then I want to display that back in the header. So here I'm right clicking in the header of the report and I'm adding a text box. And inside the text box, I type sales order colon space. And what is amazing about a text box in paginated reports is that we can add placeholders. So I have some static text. I insert a placeholder and I tell it to use the value of my report parameter. OK, so the expression here is using vb.net. Return the value of the sales order number parameter into the placeholder. And now you can see it here. And then I'm going to go ahead and format with rich text. I have a bold sales order. Let me create one more. This time I will put the name of the reseller. So the reseller, insert another placeholder, but this time the expression will use a field from my data set. You can see here it's asking for the reseller field value from the DS main data set and it asks for the first one because in the header it can only show a single value and there could be multiple rows so we're saying the first reseller name you should return into the placeholder and while I'm here notice that placeholders can also render HTML content that in your data source if your text data is marked up with HTML styling tags, you can have them render in paginated reports. So now I have my expression for reseller. Let me test the report design. And now we can see my header looks like this. Okay, so I think I'm now ready to lay out my list of sales orders. So on the insert ribbon tab, you'll see that you have all of these possible visualizations. But the ones that matter for me now are the data regions. And data regions are special because they are templates. And at report rendering time, they will grow according to the data that is retrieved. I'm going to choose a table. And a table is characterized by fixed columns and possible groupings on the rows, all right? So let me go ahead and position this so it's at the very top of the body. Okay, pixel perfect precision. I'll come down here and I'll say location zero, zero. Now, really the tablex is a set of text boxes. Like each one of these cells is just a text box. Okay, but they work together as a template. And I have guides that allow me to select entire columns or to select entire rows. And the other thing is this icon here tells me that it is the detail or row level of the data set. We'll have a look at how I'll add groups later. Now to configure it, you'll see there's this little field picker and I can just add my fields in here. 
and I need two more columns, so I right click the header, insert to the right, insert column to the right, and then I bring in the price and I bring in the sales. There we go. So now I have a table of five columns. Using DS main, let's run the report and see what the data looks like. And you know, it is producing a result. Let me navigate to the very last page and I'll see that, yeah, there are 72 lines presented, but clearly they're not very beautiful, right? So let's return to design. And this is what I'd recommend. I first select the entire header row. These text boxes, they have properties like background color, front color, border size, border style, border color, you name it. It's almost like a cell in an Excel workbook. So I'm going to use the ribbon and use a background color and I'll change the font color to white and make it bold. Now the line column doesn't need to be very wide, but clearly the product column does. And be careful here, I do not want to go wider than 19 centimeters, so it stays on the page. My quantity and sales, I want them right justified. Line number will be left justified. And then for quantity, I want to format them as numeric and with zero decimal places. So I could configure them just like an Excel. Zero decimal places with a thousand separator, and for price and sales, I'll configure them as currency with two decimal places and a thousand separator. Let's see what the report looks like now. All right, looking much, much nicer at this stage. Yet, when I come to the very end of the report, there's no totals. Well, that's easy to fix. I'm going to right click my quantity here on the detail row and I'm going to add a total. And then I'm also going to add a total to the sales amount. And then I'll just put some text here that this is the total and I will format the footer in bold. Okay. Now I want to point out that there's another way to format cells. And if you're a .NET developer by any chance, when I multi-select the cells here, I could set the format to be N0. And N is numeric with a thousand separator and zero means zero decimal places. And for these two columns for price and sales, I'm gonna format as C2. C is for currency and two for two decimal places. The other one is P for percentage. So I find this the fastest way to format, N for number, P for percentage, and C for currency. Let me come back to the report, look at the end of the report, and now we can see that I have the totals. But there's a problem still. Do you notice on page two that there is no header for the table? And yet on page one, we have the header. So it does require me to come back and to configure the table X. And this is really a little bit tricky, all right? Notice what I need to do. I need to open up what is called the advanced mode. I don't know, I don't know what Microsoft think that it's hidden from everybody, but it's in advanced mode where I can ask it to repeat on a new page. So if there's a new page, we now see that the table header will repeat. Okay, I'm gonna agree with you. <laughs> this is not good, but that's the way it's done. Okay, so that's allowed me to complete my report requirements, but I wanna explore a couple of other things now. When we run this report, we're requiring people to know the sales order number. Wouldn't it be nicer if they could first choose the reseller and then be given a drop down list of sales order numbers. Well, that's easily done with parameters in a paginated report. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new data set to retrieve all resellers from my database. So as a new data set, I'm going to name it DS reseller. And I'm just going to type in a query here, go and select 
Actually, you know, let's use the query designer. Go and select from the dim reseller table, the reseller key and the reseller name. Okay, the key is required to filter the sales invoices and this is required for the user to know who the reseller is. Now, the other thing that I would do to make sure that they sort alphabetically is order this query by reseller name. So I'm just going to modify the query. And now you'll see I have a second data set added to my report. All right, so now I'll create a new parameter. This parameter will be named reseller and uh, we will prompt for the reseller. And the data type this time is an integer. It is the reseller key that this parameter is collecting. And now on page two, I can get values from a query using the DS reseller data set where the value is the reseller key and the label is the reseller name. I can come to default values and just to speed up my development, I'm going to use a default of number 650. And I know that that is the reseller for the sales order that I've been using to test. So notice this, we now have another parameter added to the grid and my preference is that it is the first and sales order is the second. So let's test it. There we go. You can choose a reseller, but at the moment it is not doing anything to the second parameter and that requires another query. Let's create a second data set and this time I'll type it in. Select the distinct sales order number from fact reseller sales where reseller key equals and look at this at reseller that is the name of my parameter oh i should name that data set something better this would be ds sales order and it returns a distinct set of sales order numbers for a reseller now, if I come back and edit my report parameter, I can then configure it to use available values from DS sales order. And then we'll come to the default and I'll remove the default now. And when I run the report now, you'll see that the sales order lets me choose for that reseller. Or if I choose a different reseller, there's a different set of sales orders. This is what we know as a cascading parameter. There we go. So very, very powerful in paginated reports is to define parameters to collect inputs and to use data sets to provide lists of available values. So the other thing that I wanted to explore is that the Tablix is much more powerful than just listing rows from a data set. Um, we can introduce groupings and a table supports grouping on the rows, whereas a matrix supports grouping on both columns and rows. Now for a sales order, it doesn't make sense to do grouping on the columns, but what I will do is this. I'm going to edit my data set and in the fields, I can create what we call a calculated field. And the calculated field will be called line group. I want to group the lines into groups of 10. So the expression that I will use here is to come to my mathematic expressions and I have a function named ceiling. It returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to the specified double precision floating point number. Okay, well, let's build up an expression that says whatever the line number is, divide it by 10, take the ceiling of that, and then multiply it by 10. So if the value is one for the line number, one divided by 10 is 0.1, but the ceiling gives you one, and then it multiplies by 10. 
what that means now is that I have a new field and then in my table, I'm going to insert a group. I want a group with a parent group using the line group and I want a header in my table for each group. And look what happens. We end up with a new column and, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so we've got 10, 20, 30. We've now got groupings of my order lines. Well, I don't like that design, so I will remove the column. But here in this text box, I will put the line group. In fact, I will build a nicer expression. I will say it equals not the sum of the line group, but the line group minus nine concatenate to some text and use the line group. You'll see what this does. And I can also look at this, I can merge these cells together. In which case I now might give, um, let's see. There we go, look at this, line one to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30. Now where I'm heading with this is that there are interactivity capabilities like row visibility. For that detail row, I'm going to make it hidden by default, but the report will allow the user to toggle on line group. And so now we end up with the report design looking like this. Show me the lines between 31 and 40, or 51 to 60. Hmm. I think I've arrived at the end of my report design, in fact. Um, and before I finish, I want you to notice there's lots of blank space here and here. And you must be very careful to remove it. This, remember, is 19 centimeters, and this might produce a blank ending. In, in, and this is very confusing. Sometimes the report has an extra blank page at the end. And the reason it has an extra blank page is because it's rendering the rest of your report. All right, let's take a look now at the finished result. Looking good. Um, I will question the footer here though. Let's make this just a little bit better. All right, so the expression in the footer is using the execution time from the built-in fields. Now, something to be aware of, execution time returns the current date and time. When you're testing the report in Report Builder, it's actually using your desktop machine's date and time. But when you publish it to the Power BI service, it will be using UTC, coordinated time. All right, so you could, if you're in Turkey, you might say, okay, well, I will use a function that will go and add you know, maybe some, um, you know, I'm going to guess two hours, three hours from um, UTC. Or what I'll do today is I'll say execution time UTC colon space. And then I'm going to use a format function. And look at this. We have a format function here. Format this in DD forward slash mm forward slash yyy hh mm and then i will continue my expression peter by the way uh, sorry for interruption there is a, a question from a participant regarding line group values uh, i just realized this question uh, she is asking, the Seda is asking about, can we make line group values repeat? Can we make it repeat? What do you mean? Uh, maybe she can explain it maybe uh, a bit in detail. Uh, so, so what I'll do is this, let me finish this demo and then I'll, I'll, I'll discuss about that grouping in a little more detail. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. So let me just put a built-in field. Look at this. I've also got page number. I also know who the user is. I know the total pages. I know the rendering format. So we have all of this built-in information. So I put the page number in there. 
So my expression says execution time UTC, format the execution time, and then append page, and then append the page number. And now we see page one, page two. OK, and then if I refresh. Nope, OK. If I didn't collapse these, we would see this. All right, um, the question about the group then. So we have a group called line group, so I'm not exactly sure what the question is, but what you can do is come to the group properties and you, you can control several things. Again, edit uh, that uh, instead of suppress repeating the values she is saying that is it possible to uh repeating well, well, the same value no a grouping is giving you the distinct groups of line groups so l let me just answer this part first sometimes the question is can we can we create a new page with every group change yes you can can i control the sort order of the grouping yes you can okay so that that's a common question about grouping um, the other thing is that if you have, okay, the question sometimes is that if I have the same price, can I make it empty the next time? Uh, and the answer for that one is, good question. I've, I should know this, but I don't. Uh, you, if you want to suppress that because it's already been done the line before, the answer is you would have to do it through expression logic. OK, so you could come here and you could say in my expression and you could use the if operator. Uh, what do we got? We've got um, if like in Excel and you would have to use some logic to say if your value is, but the problem is you can't you can't retrieve what the previous value is. You would have to create. Hmm. Good question. I I'm, I should know, and it isn't. It's something that I think Crystal Reports does from memory. Answer is I don't. It's possible, but I think you have to do it through an expression, and therefore you must have a value on your row that says. Um, True or false? Is it the same value as the previous value? So that's the best answer I can give you. I'll just have to ask you to um, research that one through through an internet. But but having said that, I, I I don't think I've done that ever in my report designs. All right, that that if it was a product name repeating, but if you grouped by it, it wouldn't repeat. It would only be if it's in your detail and I'm I don't like the idea of hiding something if it's already been presented before and it's not being grouped by. That's my that's my best answer. Thank you. Okay. Um, and one last question regarding this section is uh, for parameters. Uh, someone is asking about if there is a uh, hundreds of values for uh, possible values for a parameter. Uh, can we make a search experience using a free text field first? And yeah, yeah, you some... can. So, so what I'll do is I'll say this is that um, if you come to you know um, uh, docs.microsoft.com Power BI, I'm just I'm just coming to the documentation for Power BI for, at Microsoft. Mm, not sure why this is slow. OK, so we have documentation for Power BI. And I know this documentation exists because I wrote it. All right, so let me show you the article and I can show you the answer that you're looking for. I'm just not sure why this is so slow. So we have best practice guidance down here. And um, I'm responsible for writing most of these articles. Now, under paginated reports, I've written an article on using cascaded parameters. And you'll see that there's some good examples here about what you can do. For example, you could ask somebody, you know, you could give them the first letter of the alphabet and you could show on the first letter of the alphabet, or you could use a search pattern. So the first one is a text box and you'll see that your query 
for SQL Server would do something like this. So the answer is yes, you can do it. You can be very creative. Okay, so you can look that up in Perfect. Power BI Thank guidance you. documentation. All right, so maybe one last thing I can do to improve this report, because when we run it, you see that it always is collapsed. Why don't we use a parameter that says expand all groups? And I make this Boolean, it's true or false. And I'll default this to false, that by default, it does not expand the groups. Now, do you see I've got this new parameter here? And so what I can do is add a new row below, and now we have a third parameter. Okay, so many properties in your report can be driven through expressions. That row visibility is now an expression. Does that parameter equal false? If it's false, then do not expand the rows. Look at this. Expand all groups, no. If I turn this to true, now notice on the right hand side, I view the report, then I can control that it will expand all of those groups. Okay, so not all parameters are used to filter data. We could also have a parameter, let's have some fun. And I say, um, highlight. What is the highlight value? And this will be a number. Uh, float. And uh, I will just specify a default value of um, uh, 10,000. Now, my rule is that if the sale amount is greater than the highlight value, then make it red. So I can come to the text box properties. And for font, I can create an expression for color that says equals if my, um, my sales amount is greater than the parameter for highlight value, then return red, otherwise return black. So this is how you can do conditional formatting. All right, so I will go ahead and, whoops, make a row below. Let's expand all. And you'll see that the 16,000 is driven through this value here. Or if I make it um, 500, and so you can control any styling and formatting by using parameters. So it provides enormous capability to customize your report design and also, of course, filter data. So that is my end-to-end -end demonstration on what you can do with designing reports in Power BI Report Builder. The next section is to talk about the user experience. We can publish, consume, deliver, and embed. So this demo is really easy. When I'm ready to publish, I save it and I use save as, and I publish to the Power BI service. Now, I'm not gonna demonstrate that right now. It does require me to be signed in, and it would require me to publish it to a workspace on dedicated capacity, okay? And I can otherwise show you what that looks like in my demo here. So in Power BI, I can come to my workspaces and I have my demo RDL. And when I publish the RDL file, it's just a report in a workspace. Okay, and you can see all of the sales order report is here. Now you could also use get data and you could upload the RDL file this way. Okay. Now when you've uploaded it, you can manage that report. And because it's connected to an Azure SQL database, you would be required to re-enter the credentials which would then be stored in Power BI, and then Power BI could use those credentials to connect and authenticate to the Azure SQL database. Now, I'm going to go ahead and consume the report. So that means I'll open up 
sales order report here. This is not the report that I just developed, but it's very similar. For some reason, my internet is slow. Even the documentation was slow, so I'm not sure what the problem is, but, but here we see way, it. Uh, sorry for interruption again. Uh, someone is asking about sharing this report we just designed. Uh, actually, it is publicly available, this Adventure Works reports, so we can share these reports with you. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's not, but, but, but I will give you some resources at the end of the presentation. Perfect. So, so I will answer that question in, in very soon. You can see that this report actually has a different filtering. You know, what type of reseller is it? What is the name of the reseller? And what order do you want to show? Okay, so what I want to demonstrate this time is that the consumption experience will let you print from the browser. If you have permission, you can download the RDL report itself. You could embed now this generates a URL that lets you embed it into maybe a Teams or a SharePoint site. Or this URL, which is a link. Let me copy this and put this into Notepad. And what you'll find is this. I'm just gonna make this easier to see. Okay, so this is the address to your workspace. And then to the RDL reports, this is the unique identifier for the RDL report. And then you'll see that the parameter values are passed in. So it's possible that, and very simple that I could, I could modify it like this. I could say, and now, by the way, let's look this up. If I come back to um, Power BI documentation, there is a section for paginated reports. Where is it? Blah, 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 for mm -hmm, mm, reports and dashboards. Okay, let's see more. And paginated reports is down here. And this topic is called URL parameters. And what you'll find is there are lots of parameters that allow you to do things like control the format. Look at this, the report command RDL, and then I can say, format so let's see what can we do here this documentation isn't doing everything that i want it to do hmm ah there we go it's a prefix there we go this is it so i would come in here and say and rdl format equals PDF. So there's my single URL. And then what I'm going to do is this. Dot, dot, copy, come to the web browser, paste that URL in. And that's going to generate and download a PDF of that report. So you could add a link to your internet website or to your application that says download invoice. And uh, it can be that simple to embed. Or a Power BI dashboard for a really good scenario. Um, no, I don't think you can do it. Oh, look, you could uh, from a, you could do it on a tile of a dashboard. Um, you could. All right. So I don't know if I got that URL correct, but uh, it should be something like RDL format equals PDF. Oh no, here it is. It's exporting in PDF right now. Okay, so that's the topic of uh consuming i've shown you how to publish and then consuming and you could also deliver by using that url now the other things we can do is page navigation you can turn the parameters pane on or off like with power bi reports you can add comments and you can have a conversation with other people about the report and this is a good one you can subscribe so by adding a subscription you know i can determine what format I want, XML, CSV for data formats, print formats of PDF and Word, or Excel or PowerPoint. 
And then I can also specify whether it uses default parameter values or I use hard coded values. I can enter the email address or addresses. I can specify the subject and the body message and then the frequency that that report will be delivered. Do I give them access to use the report? Can they uh, get a link to the report? And do I include a preview image in the email? Now, if I click Save, that subscription will be created and Power BI will render and deliver that report to your frequency. All right, now, if you're familiar with SQL Server reporting services, they have a feature called data-driven subscriptions. And data-driven subscriptions are not supported, not yet anyway, in Power BI. So it's only single report, but there is a programmatic API that is now available that developers can render reports programmatically. So you could produce your own program that does a data-driven subscription. All right, the other thing we can do is share the report in the same way that we can share a Power BI report or a dashboard. You can share it with an individual or many people or a security group. OK, that covers the user experience to publish, consume, deliver and embed. And the way I would like to finish off this presentation is to give you 20 good reasons to consider using paginated reports. Firstly, their strength is that they're ready for printing, whereas Power BI reports do not print well if they must show many rows of data. You have more render formats, so Power BI reports will print to PDF, okay, whereas paginated reports have PDF, XML, CSV, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. You have precision layout to the fraction of a centimeter on how you want to lay out and size your data. You have dynamic layouts because expressions can control many things, colors, they can control um, formats, page breaking, grouping can all be done dynamically through expressions. You can write render specific layouts using dynamic expressions. You could say if it's Excel, do this. If it's PDF, do that. And you can even do per user layouts because it's possible to understand who the end user is. And therefore, you can do different things. You could make the table invisible if it's a different type of user. Uh, the main reason for per user layout is actually data security, that you can use the user ID and understand who they are and maybe restrict the data to the country that that user belongs to. You have the ability to write native queries. That means you can write T-SQL select statements, you can use store procedures, um, you can use MDX or DAX as a query language when querying Power BI data sets. So you have a good degree of control. If you have the skill, you can write very, very uh, good queries to retrieve data. Now, if you don't have the skill, there are graphic query designers that you can help you create the query that you need. You have the new enter data, that static data source type. And we also have data integration that a report can have multiple data sources and therefore data sets can retrieve data from different sources. And it's also possible to integrate data by using a custom field. There are functions that let you look up values between data sets. But what I would suggest is that you probably shouldn't do that. It doesn't perform very well for large sets of data. And you do have a better option, I think, sometimes, is that you could use Power BI Desktop and Power Query to integrate your data, publish it to the service, and then your paginated report would query the data set instead of making your report integrate the data itself. You can do it, but maybe there's a better way. Next, parameterization is a very strong story. Report parameters controlling things like formatting and filtering. And image data, that images can come from your database if you're storing them there and the report can render them from data. Power BI reports cannot do that. They can only render images from web URLs. You can create custom code. Look at this. In Report Designer, if you know vb.net, in your report properties, you've got a code area and you can build vb.net functions in here using .NET um, uh, namespaces, like uh, many common namespaces. And so if you need to do things like um, regular expression matching, you could do this. 
and I believe there are examples of people even calling Azure functions by using uh, code within their paginated reports. You have flexible grid layouts with the tablix, the matrix and the list, and they can, they can design very complex grid layouts well beyond what pad, uh, Power BI reports can do. You can work with SQL Server spatial data types. That includes geometry and geography. And uh, the paginated reports has a map visualization that work, works directly with those data types. So if you have custom polygons defined within your data, then paginated reports can render them. But I do want to make the point that uh, it won't work for SQL Server if your data source is SQL Server on premises because Power BI needs to use a gateway to query the data source and gateway doesn't support um, CLR objects and, and complex data types, okay? But if you're working with Azure SQL, then the spatial types will work for paginated reports. Uh, you have modern gauges, so you'll see that you've got um, gauges here and um, they look good. They, they look like real gauges, so radial gauges, linear gauges and ranges and scales. I've already mentioned that you could render HTML text. If you want to produce a mail merge, remember that you've got placeholders in your text box. You could say, dear customer name, and then you could build up some text that injects data. And therefore you could produce letters um, in a mail form. All right, interactivity features, you've got um, as I've demonstrated, you've got the ability to do drill down, all right, expand and collapse. You can also control column sorting as an interactive feature, and you can also use links. And hyperlinks could link maybe to your website. They could jump to another location in the same report. If you have got a very long report, you can use links to jump to different groups in the report. And you can also use it to drill to another report in Power BI. And that report could be paginated or it could be a Power BI report. You see, every time you open a report in Power BI, you get a URL, okay? So a paginated report can allow the user to navigate using a link to another report. Uh, lastly, subscriptions. So I've already shown you how the subscriptions work. And so Power BI can on an hourly or weekly or daily basis, it can go ahead and render and deliver a report to other people. So there's 20 compelling reasons to use paginated reports. Okay, well, do we have any other questions at this stage? Yes, we have some questions. I waited for end of the section. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people asking about uh, difference between Power BI dataset uh, from other data sources. Actually, uh, it was at the beginning of the section, but uh, I I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, maybe you can answer this question. Um, so let me be and clear about this. Can I just say that the data set here is different to the Power BI data set? The data set that you see here in Power BI is different. So I want to be clear that this word data set is a different meaning. In paginated reports, it means an object that returns data, okay? But we can create a data source to a Power BI data set. So I'm not sure if that answers the question. So paginated report can source data from databases or from a Power BI data set. And then when you create that data source, you would still create a data set in the report to retrieve data from the data source. I hope that answer helps. I hope so. Uh, another question is regarding uh, the multi-page option in a single RDL file. Uh, so question is asking about it, it is possible to add multiple page on a single report or we need to make separate reports? Uh, okay, um, no. So what, so what you would do I, I can continue to do this. I can come to my footer. You know, I can add in uh, um, a map, for example. 
and then you can continue to make your report very long. And then what I could do with the map, and maybe the map's a bad example. Ah, uh, no, wait. Mm. Okay, something crazy just happened. And uh, but anyway, what I'm trying to demonstrate is you can have multiple visuals on the report. And then what I would do is this. I would come to the map properties. Okay, and and the map lets me do this. Add a page break before the map. Okay, so what would happen is the table would finish and maybe the table is two, three, four pages long. And then on page five, we have a map. So you can continue to build your report longer and longer if you want. So page breakings can be added for every visual that you that you add to the page. Or I could also come to my group properties and say, add a page break between each group. Okay, and if I, you know, if I have 10 countries, in fact, let me show you an example. In here, I have the uh, country sales performance report. And uh, this is only one page, so wrong one. Um, country sales map. So this is a multi-page report. You can see at the bottom that this is page one of six. It is the same visual, but it is just a different filters, you know, just a different grouping. Okay, I don't know why I'm getting errors. So you, you have good control of pages. In answer to the question, you can have multiple. Actually, there is a format PDF uh, at the end of the URL. It causes PDF rendering, I guess. Again and again. Uh, I don't know why that's still there. Yes, but uh, that's a different URL. Oh, okay, I'm on the wrong page. I should be here. Let's try that again. <laughs> Let's close this. Okay, so this is just the one map, but I am using different groupings on different pages. Page three is um, France. Page four is Germany. Okay, so the answer to the question is you can have many pages and different visuals on different pages of the same report. Okay, what's the next question? Uh, as far as I see, there is no any other question. Uh, if there is any new one, Please share it on Q&A section. Okay, well then let me just uh, leave you with some resources. Okay, so lots of good links here and um, many frequently asked questions are already answered at Microsoft. So this presentation, I can let you download it as a PDF and you can click on these links. When do you use paginated reports? What are the supported data sources is a very common question. Um, and this is a good point that if you're using SQL Server reporting services, there is a migration to Power BI. OK, but you must be aware of some limitations. In Power BI paginated reports, no shared data sources, no shared data sets. Um, images must be embedded. Um, Sub reports are coming, but I don't think they're finished yet. And drill through is not supported. And of course, some data sources aren't supported. OK, so if you've got existing SQL Server reporting services reports, there is a migration tool that will firstly validate that it can migrate. And if it can migrate, it will convert shared data sources and shared data sets into report data sources and report data sets. And if it can't migrate, it will tell you why and then it will help you fix it. The other thing the migration tool does is it automatically can migrate reports from your report server and publish them directly to Power BI for you. Okay, so for, if you want more information about that, I wrote an article on it and it tells you everything you need to know about migration of reporting services reports to Power BI. Okay, for some reason, it's very slow today, but the article is here. All right, so step-by-step -step considerations for migration. 
Lastly, uh, we recorded a video course. There are 24 videos for a course named Power BI Paginated Reports in a Day. And it's me and it's um, Chris Finlan, who, who owns Paginated Reports at Microsoft. So it's about four and a half hours long that if you're interested, you can watch all of the videos and you can see much more detail about how to create paginated reports. All right, so I've just clicked on the link and um, my computer is really slow. All right. I strongly recommend this content, by the way. I uh, go through it and it is really uh, high quality content. I strongly Thank you. recommend to everyone. So, so there's there's more information though, because um, here you have the online video course. So everything about designing reports, retrieving data, parameters, visualization of data, interactivity. Now, what we've given you also is a self-study kit. So if you want, you can download some labs and we've got like six different labs that take you step by step, teaching you how to create paginated reports. Now, you do not need a dedicated capacity to do the labs. Because Power BI Desktop is free and you can install it on your Windows computer, then you can do the labs um, and you do not need Power BI and you don't need dedicated capacity. So we strongly recommend that you read about the self-study kit, follow these simple instructions, and then you can have uh, a great experience learning through um, maybe four hours of labs. Okay, so that's the self-study kit. And then a very quick, if you ever want training in Power BI, hey, that's what I do for my job. And virtual training is an option as well. Uh, but uh, there you go. And so the very last slide I have for you is that if you want to download the presentation as a PDF document with the links, I invite you to use the QR code or you can enter this URL. And uh, in Mustafa, I will send the URL to you so that you can share it with your um, community. But, you know, at thank this you. stage, I've arrived at the end of the presentation and um, I thank you very much for your time and your interest. Thank you for uh, very much for your time and your uh, great presentation, Peter. There are some uh, thanks from uh, attendance as well. Uh, I am Thank seeing you. them in Q&A section. Uh, if there is no another question or uh, any other comment from Haril's side, I can we can end today's uh, event. Uh, again, thank you for everyone for their particip participation and also Peter for this great uh, time. Thank you everyone. I think Thank we you, can. Thank you, Peter. It is, it is our pleasure to have you with us again. Uh, maybe next month we can set up another meeting, webinar regarding the real time uh, reporting. We did one almost a year ago, but since then there are many features uh, introduced. And uh, I, I, I personally thank you for the training that uh, you created with Chris Finland uh, regarding Power uh, Paginated Reports. It's quite detailed and well designed. Thank you. Well, thank you. And, and I'll let you know, Halil, that um, I'm finishing a new course, which is Developer in a Day. So Power BI Developer in a Day it will be available middle of May as a new video course and some mm -hmm. labs. So stay tuned for developers embedding Power BI for this new course that is coming. Now that's very good to hear. Uh, from me, my personal question. Uh, what about the SKUs in uh, Azure Power BI Embedded Services? There are several SKUs starting from A1 to A8, as far as I remember. I think we are able to use paginated reports with some of the uh, SKUs, but so I'm not sure which ones. A4, A5, A6. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that would be a good question um, when I show you that that you know the link here is for um, the FAQ. So if I click on this, we might see that the FAQ answers that question as well. So let's have a look. I must ask the question: Was the net, the internet quality good for this presentation? Uh, actually, the internet is quite slow in everywhere, I guess. 
Yeah, oh, but, but was my presentation me. clear yes, or did it yes, sometimes... Yes, everything was clear. No any yeah. connection issue. Maybe your I upload have... is good, but download is <laughs> a bit problematic. Okay, because Teams keeps telling me the network is poor. But here's the answer to your question, Halil. Mm -hmm. um, the paginated report workload is available for P1 to P3, but you can use it A4, A6 for embed or test and development scenarios. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm actually asking this uh, because the Power BI Premium license is not for everyone. It's not uh, cheap. Uh, it's a bit expensive, to to be honest. But the Power BI embedded services available on Azure uh, is quite reasonable, and they are possible services. Right. So yes, to be aware, and that's why I said in licensing that you must have dedicated capacity. And um, yes, it might might be expensive for some companies. And one last question uh, from another participant regarding Excel export. Uh, and uh, she is mentioning that it is uh, a bit problematic in Power BI. Uh, I guess it is mentioning the matrix export. Uh, I can answer this question actually. The Excel export in a uh, Paginated reports is very similar to SSRS and it is perfectly working, uh, including formattings, images, everything in a paginated report are reflected in uh, Excel uh, as is. I can say this. Any addition from Peter? Uh, look, OK, so so there's several things I want to say. If you're using a Power BI report and you export data from a visual, you have very little control over the data in Excel. In paginated report, you have very good control by using a table or a matrix. Sometimes the uh, Excel is not good if you have multiple matrix on the same page and you're merging cells. If you're doing very complex things with a matrix, um, then sometimes Excel isn't so good. But, but you can learn how to get a good result by fixing the paginated report. Generally, the table and matrix do a very good job of exporting to Excel. But if you have complex table or matrix, maybe it's not so good. Or if you have many table or matrix in the same report, it's not good. OK, thank you. I think there is no any other question. So we can end up our presentation. OK, well, thank you very much, everybody. and. Um, it's actually uh, half past midnight now, so I'm going to go to bed, but I oh. wish you good evening. Uh, so we are again and again. Thank, uh, thank you for your time, Dan. <laughs> you're, you're, you're more than welcome. So thank you once again, and then good evening to you. Thanks a lot, Peter. You're welcome, Halil. Well, till next time.